Hello and welcome to another edition of an exclusive interview and with me in the studio is son of legendary um, mass band maker um, Dings Johnson and with me Juno Johnson. Juno, welcome to IKTV studio. Afternoon. All right. Um, your father um, played a role in, in the culture here, in the, in the cultural art form here, uh, Carnival per se. Um, he was a mass man. Now I understand that you are into the singing, the soaker. You are the soaker man of the family. Yeah, I am the only one that actually um, pursued uh, music mm -hmm. as a uh, career, if you will. Um, I am an artist just like my father. I can draw really nice pictures and such. Okay. Uh, but the music is more appealing to me. So when I'm ready, I will do a nice drawing or two. But the music is what's calling me right now and I'm, I'm obliged to answer. Okay. All right, Juno Johnson. Um, I hear I'll say JJ, but um, what, what's your stage name? <laughs> My stage name is Stapolos. Stapolos. I I'm going through a process where I'm rebranding myself. Um, okay. Before this, I have been known as June Bug. June Bug. Right. But I'm doing every everything got serious in the last year, and I'm rebranding my thing and coming with a whole different type of um, music, production-wise, quality and everything. So I changed my appearance, I cut my hair, and... Um, so you had dreads before or something? No, I just had plaits. Plaits, okay, plat okay. Hair. And um, my attitude as well, I'm basically approaching the business with more... Um, with a bit more caution. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a bit more aggression. You know what I mean? Basically, it's a more serious approach than before no more joking around with anybody you know what i mean i'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where i'm taking my thing very seriously yeah, yeah, okay so you've been involved in the um, music industry for how long and did you start off with the soca genre i, I already mentioned that you're in a transformation process is it, is it with the music or just your um, personality my personality is uh i've always been a person who everybody likes and admires i try not to leave any smudges with in terms of my character and people and um, so anyway you're gonna you wouldn't really anything bad about me um, the music part of things I started experimenting with the singing um, recording music um, about four years ago okay. and um, every year that passes I, I get more involved I get more interested in 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 uh, my career and in, in doing this as a more um, full-time, you know, uh, endeavor. So, what it boils down to now is, my father, as you know, is a, a big man in the thing. And he has a, he has his, he left his mark. So, he worked hard for what he, he have. Mm -hmm. I will do the same and try to at least make him proud of me. So far, my old man tell me that he is impressed with my music. And once my old man tells me that, there isn't anyone that can tell me otherwise. Okay, okay, okay. All right, uh, did you start off in singing soccer though? Uh, did you? I've uh, I've, I've owned my first recording is a soccer song. It's a soccer song. Okay. Even though, like anyone else, you will sing karaoke if you will. Mm -hmm or sing along with any other music that's been out there. Recording wise, I've only ever recorded soca music. Even though I have I have been influenced by the dancehall genre more than any other, mm -hmm. the reggae. But I, I've decided um, when I looked at the market down in, Vin, in St. Vincent, that there's no point in really, my opinion is there's no point in trying to make it as a reggae artist. I might as well take what I know about reggae artists, uh, reggae music, music mm -hmm. and try to fuse it, if you will. Mm -hmm. I used it to influence my delivery of in the soca genre. So this is my this is my um, what I'm what I'm doing now. I've only ever recorded soca so far, and that will be my main focus. Um, there is a lot concerning that particular type of music. And I've learned a lot. Made a few errors, like anyone else I'm human. And um, in the end though, I'm not, I, I have no regrets. Okay. 
So your intention is to um, continue your pursuit of music as a full-time career? Yes, I do. Um, with this particular type of music now, I realize that you're, you're kind of limited in terms of topics to write about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's around in a particular festival at a certain time of year, and it launch in May, done July. So you have only that short space of time to kind of get your work out there and for people to notice. And the competition is very stiff. So what I realize now is that you have to kind of get more creative with certain things like the hook in the song mm -hmm. and the the, the delivery the delivery of the, the song you know you um when when you when you when you when you're describing a situation where everybody is basically singing about the same thing or saying the same thing is the, the how you say it is very important the music behind it the work that the producer and the engineer put down behind the music now that is also very important so I would advise all the new artists them who are trying to get into the business to pay attention to the quality of their work. You have to try your best to take your time and write your lyrics then properly. Work on your melody structure. And the music now, the producer, you have to make sure the producer give you what you, the, the utmost in terms of his, his, his quality, the engineer have to do his part too. Everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, Juno. Um, I first heard of you, honestly speaking, last year. Um, you and I, we did, we did an interview on another, uh, another media forum. Um, and you came with, um, what was the name of that song? Um, Alien Invasion. Alien Invasion, yes. which was a big hit basically. But unfortunately, you, you, you didn't enter no competition last year, did you? I entered uh, Soka Monarch. Mm -hmm. I wasn't selected. Okay. But it's not that I never got anything out of it anyway. So, okay, that, that was that what I was actually leading up to now. Because of Alien Invasion, I understand that there's now Stallion. Yes. Uh, just explain to us now how this um, transformation took place from Alien Invasion to Stallion 2014. All right. Well, I am very proud of actually what went down. Mm -hmm. See, uh, a gentleman came here for Vince Mars last year. He's a Trinidadian. He works in Barbados, but he's a Trinidadian. He came here to enjoy our festival and he heard my song play on the airwaves. And he liked the song very much and contacted me and said to me, you know what, you sound like any of them big boy, if you will, of this business. And to see that you're just a new artist now. So uh, we had a few conversations um, regarding my, um, what I want to do, my purpose in terms of music and so on. He liked what he heard and then offered me an opportunity to come to Trinidad to record, uh, to do a production down there. Mm -hmm and taking the training mass one time. Okay. So you had a bit of fun while... Yeah, before we actually got <laughs> to the music. <laughs> All right. Because I wanted to use the experience to influence what I come up with and how I write my song. Okay. And um, so I, I went on the 1st of March, went to a lot of nice parties, uh, went to the carnival and enjoyed it very well. Uh, took a lot of notes mentally and took a lot of pictures, basically tried to see what I could gain out of the whole um, affair. So instead of actually being involved too much into the reverie, it was more of an educational experience yeah, okay. for me. Mm -hmm. Meant to just take it in and let it influence me in terms of my... I, I, it opens a whole new perspective on the, on the business. Okay. And you successfully produced Stallion. Yes. Uh, what is the reception being like um, from the public with regards to Stallion? Everyone who has heard the song is impressed with the, the song because it's, when you hear it, you know that it's very well done. Lyrically, it's, it, it, it did it. And the whole idea behind the song now is I was um, using a bit of my past experience regarding race horses. Mm -hmm. Thoroughbred race horses. I've worked with them a long time, and that's in Canada, in Toronto, okay. where I lived for a while. And, you know, a, a racehorse is bred for a specific purpose. So I'm saying, if your mother is a feta and your father is a feta, mm -hmm. and they have a child, what is the child? Some kind of super feta, if you will. <laughs> okay. So, you come like you're bred for the speed and the energy that you need for carnival. 
because it's a specific event, just like our races, I, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? So I just took the idea and turned it into a song. So you're thoroughly bred, you're fully bred for carnival. Mm. You know what I mean? So the stallion now is just basically the catch. Okay. It's a popular, it's a very noble animal. And it was important back in the days, even now when you're, when you're trying to, um, you know, determine the power of, of an engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They horse use power. horses, they say horse, <laughs> horse power. power. <laughs> you know, you say CC, so but you have the just stallion. The, you know yeah. what I mean? Okay. So that's, that's the whole concept behind that particular track. Mm. And I wrote it, went, and we did the production. They're very meticulous in terms of how they do music. Um, uh, at that studio, I and that was recorded and produced everything in Trinidad. In Trinidad, by Junior Joseph, he goes by the name Ibo, alias Ibo. Okay, he's a good man. Mm -hmm. And he, when I went to do the music, now they basically educated me on a lot of the nuances of the music, and further, further, um, you know, enlightened me on how things are and how to go about writing with direction and purpose. Okay, and. I have many ideas, I come up with a lot of ideas and it's just basically focusing those ideas into making it what I want in terms of music. You see me? Okay. So the thing sort out a way and it, it took a lot of sessions in the studio. As I said, most of it was educational and then when time came to record, it took six hours just to take down the vocals but it wasn't like I was, not, I was having a hard time. It's just that they were just basically doing it that, like that for my benefit. Mm -hmm just to break it down, show me this is what you do, how you do, why, and so on. Go right down. And I just had to just sit there and take it. And I was impressed in how, in, with the whole experience I was. Okay. So basically, um, this is like your second year in Vinci Mass, basically. No, this will be the fourth year. The fourth year? Yes. Recording and producing songs. Exactly. This is year four. Okay. So the prayers um, before last year. Yes, uh, the first song was done by Fourth Dimension. Um, what was that? Standard Ride. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, well, Raga Soka. Okay. The second year I did uh, Clockwork again by Fourth Dimension. Mm -hmm. And um, last year Alien Invasion. Alien Invasion by Sound Domain. Mm -hmm. That would be Kamal Archibald, Big Up Kamal. And um, this year now, I have uh, Stallion, mm -hmm. that was done in Trinidad. I have Soka Girls with me and Kido. Kido is a very gifted singer, and I believe he has a bright future. Okay. Uh, Soka Girls with Kido, and that production is done by Adrian Bailey. And I have another one now, Fun It, by Stamina Smurf in New York. So I'm about to get that one out as well. So three songs this year. All three have different purposes in the festival. In the fe okay, okay. They're targeting so, different areas of society. Okay. So, can we look forward to seeing you in um, the, the upcoming competitions? Soka Monarch, Raga Soka, I, even Road March. I am trying my best and to impress the people who, um, who are, who, the, 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 who, the who is who mm -hmm. of this business. And the who is who to me is the public. Right. And I want to impress the people, I just want a chance for the people to hear my music. In order for you to do that though, have you been going out there and doing that branding, marketing, because you know of course you must have your prom produce out there for people to, to get a hold of it? Yes, I have been doing a lot. Um, I've been trying to utilize the social networks a lot mm -hmm. and I've been trying to form connections and links and making friends where I can and asking for help. My friends help me out, my family and the man them in the area, they're serious about helping me too. LP, you don't know Langley Park, big up. Okay. LP Black. So Langley Park, you're, you're residing in Georgetown? Yes, I am from Langley Park, also known as Bay Road. Right, okay. So um, everybody's doing their, their, their best to try to help me get my stuff out there. Um, I've recently met a cousin of mine, and he's agreed to be my management. So you now have on board management? A manager. This is, this is yes. Um, this is the uh, first. Uh, management okay. I've had. I've, I've so really your first three years you've been on your own toilet and trying own. to build trying that to, yeah. brand of yourself and okay. I wanted, I didn't want to pick up a manager back then because the thing is the man have to know that I am serious. Mm -hmm. 
I want to have a resume, if you will, of songs and to be able to impress upon him or her. This is, this, this is what's good right now. And I don't really have nobody helping me before. Uh, no big man for help me. Came go here and there. Basically everything was done on my own. I was, I was on my own. Okay. I, have, I have my friends, close friends that would help me, but overall, it's just me pushing myself to get I just feel it. I just feel as though I, as though I have, I have it. So I am just pushing myself. Okay, you you've been on your own for the first three years. Right. This is your fourth year. What was the journey like for you um, coming into the business and you're coming up against um, some big names? The market is to me seems to be getting bigger and bigger each year. More artists. How has that journey been for you? That's a good question. Well. I've had really good experiences by talking to and being able to go on stage a few times and building up my my um, what you call it my stage game stage. as well. Mm -hmm. I am a by nature I'm, I I don't know if you call me a timid person, but I am not a person I'm accustomed to be in the center of attention. Right. If I am around my close friends, yes, I could be myself. Mm -hmm. But to go on stage in front of a group of people now. It's a whole different ball game, so I have to get used <laughs> to that. So you, um, uh, uh, next question, you have adapted to that? I believe I am more comfortable on stage now than I was. It's just, it's just a matter of personality for me. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? You know, you see someone show self, whatever. Mm -hmm. I realized the importance of being show self on stage, and now I'm learning to to, to be like that. Because that's the whole idea of it, right? Um, I've been working in Kanawan for two years. And while there, I took every opportunity I got to go on stage there and, and, build, your and, and build, build my confidence level. And, and now I believe I am ready to take it to a different level. Especially now that I have certain people who's given me real advice about that particular part of the thing. The thing. Uh, I've had a very nice experience with one producer. Um, I think that's, a, that's expected in the business. Mm -hmm. Producer, manager, somebody, something always got to go wrong or some mess up. But yeah, as I said, that's part of the, the business. That's just, that's, <laughs> that's something I'm willing to accept because right. some people look for the thing wrong. They might say, why? You spend all the money there and you know, I go get it back. So I'm like, yo, differently, I could have spent the money on some party and on some girls. Mm -hmm. But when I take it and I put it into my music, that is still, that is mine. I have that for the rest of my life. Right. My daughter now could go on YouTube and just listen to my tune name over and over and when she say, but daddy, I should be loved. That means more to me than anything else. When my old man says, you know, boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that means a lot. So, it's not wasting money when a man invests in himself. Mm -hmm. I believe that is one of the best investments you can actually make. Regardless of the outcome. Exactly, you, you're not wasting. And then anybody who think now that they might go spend a thousand dollars to produce a big song and then get it back in at the first two minutes or the first two weeks, uh, even the first year, it not go work. You know what I mean? There are times that it does, but most times, realistically, you've got to wait and then look to the long term. Okay. Down the road a bit, after you put in enough work, things will, hard work always pay off. Things will start to work. And then you can focus on trying to uh, make a living, if you will, half of this. So, where, as you just mentioned that, where do you see yourself in the next, well, this is your fourth year. Let me give you six more years so that we can have a decade. When you celebrate that decade, where do you see yourself, 10 years? Are you going to be an ambassador of this country? Do you see yourself going on tours, um, major features and so forth? Is that your, 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 your main goal? I am optimistic about the future. Mm -hmm. I am optimistic about the future because I intend, once I have health and strength and life, to be in this business six years from now. And every year, it doesn't matter if my music is not played as much as I would like, I will be hitting them every year with more good tunes. Okay. Next year, same thing, and the year after that. Eventually, someone will hear me. It's already starting to happen. So. Uh, your music have been um, on rotation on the radio stations, yeah? I sent it to um, every radio station. 
Have you been here in Have you been here in Tanzania? Yes. Been here in the airport. And even my friends and family members, they, they do call in and request. Okay. For me, and 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 that's a good thing when they would actually take it upon themselves to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud. I mean. You know, to actually hear my, my song on the radio, it's amazing. What, 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 is, what is your opinion on the, the Vincentian's music industry in general? Um, do you think enough support is being given to upcoming new artists? Um, you've been on your own for some time and it seems like you are going in the right direction, but do you think that there's enough support? And if, if, if not, what do you think can be done? If so, then um, state the reason. I believe more support could be given to the new artists. Whenever you're new, people are unwilling to listen to what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, just because they don't know you. And um, you have to kind of impose yourself on them. You know what I mean? You have to put in that work to get their attention. Uh, I believe that there should be more done to expose the young acts. You know what I mean? Uh, even I, I wouldn't go into specific what ideas of what I have, but whoever are, whoever is running the media houses and such, they will they will know. They're smart people. They will know what to do in terms of helping the young artists get. But the thing is, right, is that um, the uh, young artists, as I mentioned earlier, they have to be able to to earn that. They have to be able to. They have to show that they are serious about the thing. They just can't come with any old thing and say, well, yeah, you know what I mean? And at the same time, they have to be educated by the older acts, the older people in the business, about what's good and what they should call them, what should be, they should consider to be good material. So, I believe, I believe more could be done to help the young artists, but the young artists them have to earn that sort of um, right, the, the right. Uh, they have to earn that, 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 that recognition as well, putting in that work. Okay. So, are you satisfied with um, where you're at in your career, in this building career of yours? I am very satisfied, I am more than satisfied. Hard work is being paid on. Yes, I, 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 I take, um, earlier on this year when I got to travel, that for me is a major thing. Okay. Um, for somebody to actually um, take me up and, and want to spend that kind of money and, and, and just fate alone. Okay. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I haven't gotten to mention his name as yet. But... Mention whose name? The man who helped me. And who is that? His name is Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone is watching this, go to Barbados and they go to Bridgetown and they see a business name, Trini Doubles. He, that's his, that's his um, business, you see me? And um, he is the man who helped me, Kevin. I've met some other people in Trinidad, but only because of him. Um, so Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Randon, my good friend, mm -hmm. you know? So I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't begin to express how important it is. And there shows right there that's the importance of hard work because if you haven't been pushing yourself and promoting yourself, I guess Kevin would not have heard about you. Exactly. So, hard work is? Hard work is done. All right, um, anything else you want to add before we wrap up, of course, um, we're, we're almost out of time. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, well, just, um, I would have to big up the management, you know, this is, I could send some shout outs there. Manage, management, who is your management by the way? You've been speaking to me and yeah, <laughs> you say you have a new manager and what's not, um, you don't want nobody to know who's your manager? Danny Collins, also known as Prince from WFM. Well, 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 Mr. Prince, <laughs> Mr. Prince. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Prince. Yes. Good man, good man, good man, good man. Yes, <laughs> yes. Very good friend of mine. He's also my cousin and according to him, my father is his favorite uncle. Okay, there we go, so. All right. My father sang at his I wedding. I guess you're in good hands. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So uh, it actually works out pretty well because okay. now I have somebody I, who I could be um, sure of don't have an ulterior motive who would just be working for my best interests. All right. And this is something that's very important to me in this mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody just work together, create good material, and then what we get out of it now is... It's, it's, it's easier to enjoy, to enjoy. All right. Um, I, have, I have to big up the man, the man, the LP Black. 
You don't know. Longley Park. Longley Park, you don't know. Right. Tiba, Paran and Company. You know? Man, them from the LP football team, Enzo. You know what I mean? Navi, a good partner, Navi. World Boss, come on, you don't know. You know, there's Chanel. You know, my good girlfriend, Chanel. Yeah, that, there's so much people I don't know if I could remember. Well, there's everybody. Yeah. Everybody. everybody who knows yes. Juno. But and of who course. have assisted Juno. But of course, my good friend, Ralston Yearwood, mm -hmm. and my best friend in Canada, Chucky. You know what I mean? And Kevin, of course. And, and you know, one of my biggest avid supporters is DJ Donovan. Okay. From day one. Exclusive songs. Yeah, and he's, you know, and you don't know, and Indica. Uh, so here's a DJ Blaze, and you have a, you have a selector named DJ Stamina in Kanawan. Okay. You know, you have Bill, and you also have one named Maxwell. The man, they, they don't discriminate, they just play my tune. You know so you've I mean? been getting that support, growing support? Yeah, there are people out there, are good people out there that, that are not biased. Right. And, and some of the DJs, them, I would encourage them to be more, more forgiving to the, the new artists. Them. If a man have a good song, just play the song. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, of yeah, course. This, now you mentioned something, I just want to open my small can of worms. Go ahead. Um, some artists who have interviewed before said that they're, they're of the opinion that there's favoritism among DJs and the, the people, the artists, the music they select. Do you have that same opinion? I would, I would prefer to stay away from that topic. Oh, so you won't answer that question unless your lawyer is present? It right, would, it would, it would, it would, um, <laughs> it might, it, it might, um, it, it might, might have some implications it might cause issues. <laughs> I basically, it's a more of a, what you call it, music politics other uh, okay, okay. area, and I, I try not to delve in that too much. All right, fair enough, and I respect that. I appreciate and respect that. All right, Juno, uh, Master, thank you very much for coming through, bro. Done. All the best, but of Stallion, course. and all the other songs you have coming out for Vinci Mass 2014. Remember, people, your stage name is Stopolos. 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 But before that, I've been known as June Bug. So the bug has been put aside and he's now Stopolos with the stallion already out and you have Soka Girls coming out. Yes, and one more named Fanit. And one more named Fanit. Um, young member of the Soka industry here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Juno Stopolos Johnson, Johnson, son of Dings Johnson. Thank you very much again and best of luck to you on your future career. Thank you so much, sir. All righty. This has been another unexclusive interview. I'm your host, Odwin Hartley Andrews. Thank you for joining.